Hello again, everyone. I want to first uh, once again thank everyone. My channel keeps on growing. This is really good news because I've, I'm very motivated to do a lot of math videos. I want to give you thanks. If you've already subscribed, we're going to be creating a lot of content. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe because a lot of this materials you're going to find very useful, especially if you're taking tests at school. My life is dedicated to math. So I live and breathe math, and that's pretty much uh, my passion. And so I want to take a moment for this video. This could be a short video. So we're not going to get into any theory in this video. This is going to be straight brute force video. The message of this video is intended for uh, students who want to shorten the length of time that they spend on tests, particularly when you're solving mundane equations, right? And so today the topic is going to be quadratic equations. And quadratic equations, of course, I know you learned uh, at this point, some of you have learned the quadratic formula. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm not going to spend my time. If I were doing a test, I'm not going to spend my time doing quadratics on a test. So I figured I will share with you a method. And let's see if I can share. I had my screen somewhere. Okay, I think I got it. All this tech is just. All right, so what you want to do just very quickly, again, I'm not going to get into the theory. I'm just going to go straight through how you can solve like typical quadratic equations. So a quadratic equation, a typical one, that you can identify very easily is has to form ax squared plus bx plus c. Remember, c is a constant. A and b are so you probably learned at school with your teacher the quadratic formula. You probably also learned the uh, factoring, which is okay too. When you get into higher level equations, of course, factoring can become very useful. But what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you a way that you can solve on any test a quadratic equation of this form. Make sure you understand what I'm talking about. It's this form and see what the solutions are. Now, typically, uh, most quadratic equations that you deal with at the high school level have two solutions. That's why the degree here, the exponent is two. That means that if the degree is two, that means typically there are two solutions. Not always, but uh, we call them roots of the equation, right? So let's say you had, you were taking a quiz or a test, and you have to solve 2x squared plus 5x minus 12, something like this. So what you want to do, I know you can use the quadratic formula. I already know that, but you don't, I don't want to spend so much time doing that, especially if I'm being time for other things. So what you want to do first, all right, you're going to multiply the constant by the coefficient of the first term. In this case, it's two. All right. Now remember quadratics, the, uh, this has three terms. The first term is 2x squared. The coefficient means the number that is attached to your variable in this particular context. That, that's not really the definition of a coefficient, though, but in this particular context, that is what we are, uh, that's what we are referring to. So we multiply the constant, which is negative 12, by the coefficient of the first term, which in this case, it's 2. So let's do that we would then have negative 12 times 2, which is negative 24. Now, once you have that, right, you have to think, which two factors give you 5, because 5 is the, the middle here, the 5x, and also equal negative 24. Now, if you know your multiplication table, uh, in negative 24, I should say, when multiplied. Now, if you know your multiplication table, you know, you, this should come easy for you because we know that if you multiply eight plus negative, if you multiply eight and negative three, you get negative 24. And if you add eight plus negative three, you're going to get positive five. So already 
your two factors are eight and negative three. I don't know why it's doing that. Eight and negative three. All right now, one more thing. You divide by the coefficient of a, right? So once you have these factors, right? Turn them into opposites. So what is the opposite of eight? The opposite of eight is negative eight, and the opposite of negative three is positive three. And you're almost done now because go back to the equation, two x squared plus five x minus twelve. We're gonna divide each of those factors now by two. So negative eight divided by two gives me negative four. Three divided by two is just three halves. So the answers are negative four and three halves. If you don't believe me, you can check, use the, use the quadratic formula. This will always work on equations of this form. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. For, so let's recap our steps. Multiply the constant with the sign, right? In this case, negative 12 times the coefficient of the first term. In this case, it's positive two. Negative 12 times two is negative 24. You add the two factors that give you five and also equal negative 24. In this case, eight plus negative three gives me five, but eight and negative three also multiply to negative 24. So I'm done at that point. And it took you, it should take, once you start doing this method, it's gonna take you less than 10 seconds in the majority of cases to solve those problems. Let's do another one. What if I gave you 10X squared? Again, this is very simple algebra, algebra one, pre-algebra level. 10x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. So again, step one, we're going to have to take this number and multiply it by the 10, right? So this number here is going to be multiplied to this number here. We have negative 2 multiplied by 10. That gives us negative 20. Then we have to think of factors that when you add them up, you get negative 1, right, which is right here in the middle and also multiply to negative 20. Well, I mean, negative five and four work. Negative five times four is negative 20. Negative five plus four is negative one. So our factors are negative five and four. And then we said always take the opposites. So the opposites, I'm gonna write them in white. The opposite of negative five is five. The opposite of four is negative four. So now I just divide, the last step is to divide by the coefficient of a in this case it's 10 so i have 5 over 10 which is a half always reduce your fractions and then i have negative 4 over 10 which reduces to negative uh two-fifths so our answers are one half and negative two-fifths easy right shouldn't take you long to do this instead of using the quadratic formula not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying sometimes on tests, you don't want to spend so much time. Let's do another one just to see that it works. And again, you can test me. If you don't believe me, you can test. This is all, I could get into why this is, by the way, but I, I told you the purpose of this video was to just go through the steps and not really, I'm not really getting into theory in this video because I know students have asked me to be fast. So that's why I'm not explaining to you the theory in this video there will be videos though that will be long and i will be talking about the theory of certain things and all that but this video again is meant to be just kind of brute force let's do another one 21 x to the square minus 11 x minus 6 equals 0. okay so we got to multiply negative 6 times the 21. Negative 6 times 21, well, 1 times 6 is 6, 2 times 6 is 12, so negative 126. All right, so what are your factors? Remember, it has to add up to negative 11, and it also has to add up to negative 126. Uh, so if we use, for example, negative 18 plus 7 gives you negative 11. And negative 18 times 7 is also going to give you negative 126, right? So your factors are negative 18 and 7. Take the opposites. 
18 and negative 7. And divide by the coefficient, which in this case is 21. And this time you get 18 out of 21, which cannot be reduced. Well, you can reduce it, actually. You can, because there's a common factor of 3. So you can reduce that to 6 out of 7. And so that's one of your answers. And then negative 7 over 21. The common factor is 7. So that can reduce to one negative one third. Done. 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 Six sevenths and negative one third. Less, less than 10 seconds. All right. Let's do one more and I'll call it a day for this video. Three X squared. Minus 17 X. Minus 28 equals zero. We're going to multiply our negative 28 times three. Well, three times eight is 24, so I know my last digit is going to be four. Three times two is six, but I carried over two, so it's going to be negative 84. All right, now factors. We need factors that multiply to, to negative 84 and also add up to negative 17. Well, I know that four times one is gonna end up at four. I know that two times four is eight. So I know that tw negative 21 can work plus and four because negative 21 plus four gives you negative 17. Beautiful. All right, so now we take the opposites. The opposites are 21 and negative four. And then we divide by the coefficient of the first term. In this case, your coefficient is three. 21 over 3 is 7. 4, negative 4 divided by 3 is just negative 4 thirds. I mean, you could get a decimal, but I don't, I'm not interested in the decimal here. Negative 4 thirds is fine. Or you could convert it to a mixed number, which if your instructor says to do that, that, that is how you solve these equations instantly. So, I hope that this is useful to you when you're taking, uh, you know, when you're solving like a basic quadratic. I should also mention, by the way, let me see the first one it was, there was something else here. Sometimes you can divide a, if you can, you can always divide the equation by the coefficient or by a factor to reduce it. Um, and that should work out pretty well. I'm not going to get into it in this video though, but you should know that you can always reduce by the coefficients by or by factors and that you'll still, it will not alter the equation in any way. It will just reduce it for you, make your life easier. So I hope this video was helpful. I also posted a video today. I posted on what is a function. I just gave the definition of a function though, nothing else. And basically how, what the domain is and the range. So we should be looking at, the, at those as well, because I know some of my subscribers have asked me for that. So without much further ado, thank you for watching. If this was useful to you, please subscribe to the channel. Again, our channel is growing. It's been really a blessing. Yesterday, I didn't expect the SAT video to be, to be so important for so many people. So I'll definitely be doing more things about the SAT. And I haven't looked at module two, but I will. And let's see if it's so uh, I've, I've had students telling me in the comments section, oh, it's so hard, module two, it's so hard. Well, we'll see, we'll see. It, it might be just a time management issue, but if the topics, I have to look at the topics to give an, an educated opinion as to what I think of module two. So I'll be doing that in the coming days. Thank you everyone, enjoy the rest of your day and keep in touch, stay tuned because more things are coming.